Good afternoon. Hope to find you well uh, this afternoon from Hermiston High School's Doghouse. It is the 2012 Big Sky Volleyball Tournament. The championship matchup, the Dufer Rangers, the Condon Wheeler Arlington Knights here this afternoon in Hermiston with the uh, league title on the line. Condon Wheeler, top team of the East, Dufer the tops out of the West, the Rangers clad in black uniforms with the red numerals and the white trim. The uh, Knights, the black uniforms with the white numerals, excuse me, the light blue numerals trimmed in white here this evening. So, a couple of teams with black jerseys here as we get started in set number one here this afternoon. Connor Wheeler got here by dispatching of South Wasco County in three sets earlier this afternoon. 
Dufer defeated the defending state champion Ion Cardinals in a four set match in the opening match here today, 10 a.m. this morning in Hermiston High School's gym. So it is Condon, Wheeler, Arlington, and Dufer taking on each other here for the championship. Ione is the third team out of the conference that is going to be moving into the OSAA playoffs. They beat South Wasco County in a three-set match just a little while ago. The Knights are going to have the serve attacking right to left as we take a look at things here. And it is going to be their senior libero, Brittany Lida, who gets things started. Right-handed hitter, the defensive specialist, who is a free substitution for the Knights. And it'll be due for two receive. Out wide, and the attack by Tadeo McDonald is going to be wide. So the first point of this match is going to go to Condon Wheeler. Maria Clemens is the head coach for the Knights. Taryn Humphrey and Kayla Grubach, the assistants. And it's going to be a floated serve into the net to even this match up at one apiece. Back to serve for the for Rangers is a junior, Kyla Johnson. The head coach, Kelly Darden. Jody Am is the assistant for the Rangers. And it's going to be an ace for Johnson to put Dufer in front, 2-1. The Rangers 20-4 with an 8-0 record in conference play. Condon Wheeler 16-3. They went 6-0 to take the East. That serve is just going to stay in on the back line. In the middle, tip play there. And Dufer will control. Pipe set blocked away by Logan. That was the junior Ellie Logan who made her presence known a year ago here at the Hermiston High School gym in this Big Sky Tournament, both in basketball and in volleyball. And an ace served in that time by the setter for the Knights, a junior, Bailey Harrison. So Harrison out there along with Lida, who's the libero, in the off-colored jersey. Ellie Logan, Matty Jamison, who is a sophomore, is another starter for this Condon Wheeler team. They'll try in the middle. Logan will go off of the hands of Johnson, and Dufer keeps it alive. Free ball coming over from Taylor Darden. Try Logan again, denied that time, right back by McDonald. And McDonald's block is gonna lead to a point to give due for the advantage. Four to three, they're gonna make a change here. And it will be Johnson coming out. And into the game, Katie Hellier, a senior for Dufer. Back to serve is Montana Ferris, a sophomore. Logan receives and will get it right back in the middle. Tipped out to the line. Dufer controls. The attack by McDonald, sent back by Logan. Now it's going to be Condon Wheeler's control. Logan again. Dug in the back row. Darden got her hands on it, and she'll try the attack. Paintbrushed attack kept alive by the setter. Left side tipped over. Dita Harris, a sophomore for Condon Wheeler. Long point here, tied at 3-3 in set number one. Again, Harris, big swing, set back by the block, kept alive up into the scorer's table, chasing after it, Lida couldn't get there. And so it's going to be a do for point, four to three, their advantage. Ferris back to serve, Taylor Darden out there along with Alexa Messia, Kyla Johnson just came out, Katherine Johnson, Tennille McDonald, and now Katie Hellier is in for Dufer. And that's gonna be McDonald, the junior puts it away. Extends the Dufer advantage to 5-3. to three. The two teams did meet once this season. It was back, actually, non-conference affair in the playoffs. And it was a Dufer victory. Two sets to one at the Sherman County Tournament in Morrow. Free ball from Macias. A chance in system to go wide. Harris tips and finds the floor right at the 10-foot line. The kill for Dina Harris, and she'll go back now to serve. Harris, Brittany Landis, Bailey Harrison, Harley Woods, Addie Jamison, and Ellie Logan. The starting six of four, Condon Wheeler. And then Lida is the libero who's in, in the back row right now. That's going to go off the fingertips of Harris and end up a kill for the Rangers to extend their advantage to six to four. Early action here in the Big Sky Tournament Championship. Neil McDonald back to serve. Both teams are going to the state playoffs. Seating going out of the uh, big sky and by extension to that, your RPI on the line here today. 
That's the seating system used by the OSAA to determine who will play who. And Logan got her hands on it, but nobody was there. Bailey Harrison pulled up. I don't know if she called for help or not. Harley Woods was in the area, but it falls the floor. And so now Dufer's advantage is 7-4 here in set one. Service run continues for McDonald. Their big hitter, and Logan's the big hitter for Condon Wheeler, gets another kill. One-on-one -on -one block there, and somebody of Logan's ability, she's going to go one-on-one. -on -one. She's going to find herself with a lot of kills in that type of situation. 7-5, to five, Dufer's advantage. Tips kept alive. Condon Wheeler scrambling, and a punch over to keep it up by Jamison. Out wide, though, on that fisted ball. 8-5 to five is now the advantage for the Rangers. That dump over by the setter Harrison is going to find a floor off of the tip from Dufer. That'll be a kill to make it eight to six. Still the Rangers up. Dufer actually lost relatively recently a two-setter against Perrydale in the tournament they host near the end of the season. Dumped over pass is going to give Dufer another point to extend it to 9-6. to six. It'll be Kyla Johnson back in and Katie Hellyer out. Katherine Johnson, a junior, back to serve. Logan handles. And they'll try wide, tipped over there by Jamison. Over pass, tip back. Knight's still alive on this one, send a free ball. Near side, Landis, kept up by Macias. Another long point here. Last long point went Dufer's way. In the middle, off the net, and it got the shooter's roll for Matney Jamison. Cuts the Dufer lead back down to two. And now out was Landis, and in and to serve is another Logan. This is the freshman, Emma Logan. Good serve, tough, but tipped over. And it's going to be the setter, Harrison, who keeps it alive. Little slide play, Darden gets the kill. Taylor Darden, the sophomore, coming around the backside of the setter towards the right pin, puts that one down to extend the lead to 10-7. And now back to serve, the sophomore. Try left side wide, and it's going to be Harris who gets the kill right off the back line. 10-8. A little bit of confusion here for Condon Wheeler, who's serving. And now we're going to have a stoppage here. Marie Clemens wants to have things looked at. Logan is back with the ball on her hip right now to serve. And now they will make the change. They do need to rotate. Matney Jamison was set to serve, but they'll switch and put the libero Lida in to serve. And the senior lined up near side to us. Gets into the back row. They'll try McDonald wide and into the top of the net with her attacking effort. That's going to cut the Dufer lead down to one. Ten to nine here set number one at Hermiston High School. Eric Olson with you. The coverage on the Hermiston High School school and Hermiston School District websites. Live stream. Miscommunication. The ball was sent back by Logan and Harrison. And Dufer discombobulated on their response. It's tied at ten. McDonald out wide, off the net with the set. The attack, though, is going to be long. Dufer looking around for a tip there, but McDonald was not able to find any fingers, so it's going to be Condon Wheeler's first advantage, 11 to 10. And now it's going to be 12 to 10, a rotation violation on Dufer. And right now the down official is talking with Montana Ferris and Alexa Macias about their movement at the serve of the ball by Lida. 
Two point lead for Condon Wheeler. Pipe set Darden. Doug been over and another chance here for Dufer. They'll try left side, Ferris into the back row. It's the younger Logan who gets it. Right into the middle, good dig there by Darden, the platform to keep it alive. And Condon Wheeler will try again, bump set wide. Harris tips into the back row. Scramble, McDonald's free ball over. Harris, big swing, Darden keeps it up. Dufer keeps it alive, now the free ball, can they get it over and it's cleared by Ferris. Try the middle again, Logan. Right off of the hands of Johnson. Johnson sends a free ball. They got to try Logan again in the middle. No wide. Harris tries to go high. Can't find fingers. That's going to end another long point. Back and forth. These two teams are battling here. Definitely two teams that have adjusted into playoff mode. Once you get into the playoffs, as two first cut, Condon Wheeler's laid down to 12-11. You'll see a lot of teams will play a lot of close balls. Balls that you might earlier on in the season let go because they might be out. Now you don't take any chance. You just keep the point alive and you try your very best to make sure that you win the point by terminating the point. 13 to 11 after a service error. Scramble and Dufer's not going to be able to get that up. Essentially an ace coming for the setter. Bailey Harrison. 14 to 11, the advantage for the Knights. The black and light blue against the black and red numerals. Dufer's side, their attack. And pipe set didn't go so well. Darden just sends a free ball over, but Condon Wheeler can't make anything out of it, and it's going to be a point for Dufer on a ball handling violation. Kitty Elliott comes back in to play in the front row as Johnson had made it through the rotation. Check that, it's going to be Hellier to play in the back row, excuse me. Ferris to serve. Off the net, it's going to be a kill. Ace there, Logan dove for it, but then when it clipped off the net, changed direction on her, and so that's going to cut the Knights' advantage down to 1, 14 to 13 here in set 1. Scramble again, Logan's going to make something out of it, and off the block gets the kill. Dina Harris is back to serve with the Condon Wheeler Arlington team up 15 to 13. And that is going to lead to an attack error in the statistical category for Dufer. Essentially, the serve from Harris too good for Dufer to be able to control. But they have four touches, and so it's a point to extend the lead to 16 13. Johnson dug by Lida. Logan in the middle, set back by the block of McDonald. Logan will set it out wide herself. Nice back set there. Landis just sends it clear on a cut shot. And a back row attack. Tenniel McDonald leaves off of just her left foot on that jump and was able to find it right on the back line. Dufer cuts the Condon Wheeler lead back down to 16 14. McDonald. The juniors made her presence known, now ends up with an ace. She, along with Ellie Logan, a couple last year that you could see in this volleyball tournament in 2011, were going to obviously continue to make a name for themselves for years to come as McDonald gets another ace. Now, last year, though, it was everybody running along with and trying to keep up with the Ion Cardinals who took third place. And Ion ended up running the table last year and came away the state champions in 2011. They're going to get into those playoffs, but either of these teams are looking at a much better shot. Both teams playing very well here. 17-16 current score. As Dufer has pulled back what was a three-point deficit. Darden, the tack, and just off the top of the net, no hands with the block. Ties it at 17. Dufer had actually taken an advantage there, and now it's back even. Race to 25. Point every serve. 
Darden tips it into the back row. Harrison picks wide. It's going to be Harris, the attack, and she, with her follow through on her swing, got into the net. Eighteen seventeen, Dufer here, set number one. Lefty swing by Alexa Macias, the junior. Tips just wide. The sophomore Harley Woods tried to go line and couldn't quite get it. And it's going to force Maria Clemens to take a timeout. 1917 right now in the first set. The Rangers down by three at one point mid set are now up by two on a really good string of serves by the junior Tennille McDonald. So it was a 2-0 loss to Perrydale. And prior to that, the last time the Dufer Rangers had lost a match was at the Hepner tournament. They lost to the host team, who is a 2A school, the Mustangs, two sets to one. Their 2-0 loss to Perrydale on the 20th of this month was the only time that they had been blanked all season long. The other losses to Powder Valley. Powder Valley is the team that has kind of been the bridesmaid the last couple of years at the 1A level. And uh, they uh, beat Dufer back on August 30th at Weston McEwen three sets to one after Weston McEwen, a 2A school, had beat Dufer three to two. Dufer takes another point out of the uh, timeout and now their advantage is 20 to 17. Macias continues her service run. It's been a couple of long service runs for Dufer. Macias following McDonald. McDonald gets her hands on it, but not able to pick that one up. Big swing for Condon Wheeler. Gets the side out they were looking for. And down 20 to 18. They've got the serve. Courtney McKinnis, a senior, playing in that back row right now. Middle attack, high into the back by Jamison. Dufer can't control it. And now it's down to one again. 20 to 19, Dufer's advantage. McKinnis back to serve again. McDonald on the pipe set, dug in the back by Logan, but out into the crowd on the far side. So it's going to be another kill for Tadale McDonald. It makes it 21 to 19. Kyla Johnson in. Katie Hell, you're out. Johnson to play front row. Due for up by two. Four away from taking set number one in this race to three sets. Best of five here. Sets one through four played to 25. The fifth set is played to 15. You got to win all of them by two. Condon Wheeler gets the point there as Dufer not able to handle. Now 21 to 20 is the Rangers' advantage. Emma Logan back to serve for the Knights. Back set into the middle. Darden's tip is denied. Now they'll say into the net. There's Maddie Jamison. I'm not sure that Darden's attempt is going to come over on that effort there. But it ends up going for a Dufer point, and now an ace. Taylor Darden has given Dufer their biggest lead of the match, 23 to 20 here in set number one. And Maria Clemens will take the second and final time out here this set. 20 to 23 to 20 is the new for Ranger advantage. Kelly Darden trying to direct traffic here to settle things in and finish off this first set. Right now the lead is three. And the new for Rangers trying to finish out set number one. Again, 
early season matchup, two to one at the Sherman Tournament in favor of Dufer. Darden tees it up again. Harris. Darden keeps it alive as it bounces around in the rafters. Pinball and Dufer still alive on this set. Dumped over on two by Harrison. Sniffed out, Darden rolls it into the back row. Miscommunication there, they still get a swing for Harris out of it. They'll try McDonald in the middle, tips it over to the 10 foot line and kept alive by the setter. Another long point, set back by the block. Logan with a dig. Jamison, off the hands of McDonald, they'll pipe it into the back there, the attack by Johnson, finds the floor for a kill to make it 24 to 20. Katherine Johnson, not necessarily the player you would expect Dufer to pick out for a pipe set situation, but the junior was able to put it down and get themselves set point. Darden keeps swinging in the serve. Harris tips short, and that's going to be set number one. 25-20 here in the first set, and that's going to give Dufer the advantage. The Big Sky District Tournament here at Hermiston High School. The Hermiston Sports Boosters Club plays a major role in uh, putting this event on. Last year was the uh, first year that the tournament was back in Hermiston. The uh, Boosters welcoming competitors and fans to the Big Sky Tournament. They try to provide the best experience for students, athletes, and the fans as well. And uh, the fans checking out this event here could also look into one of the ways that the Hermiston Sports Boosters raise money is one of their fun fundraising events is coming up on Saturday November 24th at John Walchley Farms they're going to have a Texas Hold'em fundraiser tournament $100 gets you an entry into the tournament people just want to come for the food and fun $25 the uh, tournament start will start at 6.30. For those who are interested in more information, you can contact TJ Hansel at 561-4097. And also, tickets are available at Eastside Market on Main in Hermiston. So it's not too far of a trip for a Saturday for those out of the big sky here. Want to play some poker for a good cause, the Hermiston Sports Boosters. Now annual fall poker tournament. In a battle when you break these uh, two teams down, Tennille McDonald and Ellie Logan take a lot of the headlines, but on Dufer's side, you can't overlook the sophomore by any means, Taylor Darden. Darden actually probably the more impactful there in that set. McDonald had her kills, but Darden didn't just do it attacking at the net, she also had her success at the service line. And Dufer was able to put together a couple of good runs at that service line on Darden's swings. They also had a good run when Alexis Macias was serving. Darden was serving when they made the comeback. Macias helped them take the advantage and then Darden served out the set. 25-20, set number one goes to the Rangers. So they are 25 and 25, 50 points away, theoretically, from a Big Sky Tournament Championship. I own won this thing last year in the first year back in Hermiston. Ended up with the undefeated season in a state championship. A couple of teams here that like their chances going into the uh, state tournament. You've got Dufer, who's actually the number one ranked team based on the RPI criteria. That is the mathematical criteria used for seeding. We start set number two. Ellie Logan will take a big swing that's denied by the block. Darden and McDonald in there. Now Harris will tip. Excuse me, it was Macias the setter. That's going to be a legal handling by Kyla Johnson. And so Condon Wheeler will take the opening point. They actually led for most of the opening portions of that first set. And then it was on the Darden serve that Dufer was able to make their comeback and regain the lead. Logan again a big swing. Deflects off of Johnson, kept alive the overpass, and Logan sends it back with authority. 
Bailey Harrison back to serve. In the front right now, Harley Woods, Ellie Logan, and Dina Harris. The setters in the off-colored light blue jersey. Brittany Leiter, she's a senior, has the dig. And kept alive, but an illegal handling there on Harrison. And then Brittany Landis rounds out the six on the floor right now for Condon Wheeler Arlington. Maddie Jamis is on the bench, but she is the one who would theoretically be where Lida is positioned on the floor, the libero. Dufer's advantage, 2-1. Tip over there by Logan, rolls off the top of the net, and Dufer will send it free. Try Logan again in the middle. Big cut there, and it's kept alive. Big diving dig. Dufer, though, on the attack is long. Katie Hellier, the senior, had the big diving save. Hellier playing in the back row right now with Taylor Darden and Montana Ferris. The setter, Alexa Macias, comes back to Darden and the pipe set out wide. And they'll exchange back and forth. That was McDonald with the set. Tennille McDonald up front along with Alexa Macias right now and Katherine Johnson. And sent back by Logan. Condon Wheeler gets the point. Four to one their advantage now. Dina Harris, the sophomore to serve. The team up by three in the dark jerseys with light blue numerals and trim. Tacking left to right, that's the Knights. The Rangers just that swing there. Darden kept up. Logan flicks it up into the air, but it did touch the ground, so it's going to be a kill. And so the point for the Rangers makes it 4-2, to two, Condon Wheeler's advantage. Tennille McDonald back to serve and right into the net. Maybe a little rush there on that serve. You can kind of tell the toss didn't get up to about the same height that she's accustomed to. And now Logan will pound one back and find McDonald. Overpass joust at the net and they're going to say into the net. On the play was Matney Jamison. Joust those 50-50 balls right over the top of the perimeter of the net. And that time, coming back down, Jamison just clipped the net. Maybe actually caught it with her hip. 5-3, to three, Condon Wheeler's advantage by two. Here's Jamison, left pin too high. She wants the touch. Everybody for the Knights with their fingers into the air saying we got a touch and none of the officials saw it so it's going to make it a one point lead for the Knights as the lefty Macias keeps serving. Right into the middle. That one did not get a touch either and now this time Maria Clemens, the head coach for Condon Wheeler is off the bench wanting the call. Not going to come and it's tied at five. Set number two after Dufer picked up the first set. Miscommunication, it worked out. Landis and Jamison were in the area. Jamison, who's considerably taller than Landis, got her hand on it and got the kill to give the Knights a one-point lead. It's six to five here in set two. Knights can't put over the overpass, but they get a free ball. Right into the middle, too tight to the net. Jamison can just tip with her left hand. McDonald on the pipe. Off the hands of Jamison, but out wide, and that's gonna end up with a kill for Tadeo McDonald to tie this match at six in set number two. Johnson in, you're out for the Rangers. And it's the junior, Katherine Johnson, back to serve. Overpass, set back, the setter, Bailey Harrison goes up. The overpass to Darden, and Harrison got her hands on it to roof it back to give the Knights a 7-6 advantage. Emma Logan with that serve. She just came in for Landis and the attack from McDonald is flat-footed and almost off balance falling away from the net. Condon Wheeler's lead is back out to two at eight to six. They led four to one. That was their biggest here of this uh, set. Tip over and Dufer keeps it alive. 
In the middle, Jameis a big dig there down to the floor was uh, Johnson. Jamison tips this time, sent right back by Darden. Free ball sent over. Little low liner off the net, and that's going to end up a point for Condon Wheeler. Sometimes it's not necessarily the kill that you bounce up into the rafters off the 10-foot line. If you can scramble and get points, you'll take them to 9-6. to six, Condon Wheeler's advantage set to. Down a set here to Dufer. Jamison goes high, got the touch that time. 10 to six. Condon Wheeler in this set, whether it's by design or just by the way the uh, sets are playing out to their hitters, have ended up with a lot of high attacks that have led to them trying to get the top of the block with their hands. That one's sent back by Johnson. Kyler Johnson again, it sipped over her this time and another free ball from Dufer. How about a third time for Harris? She has to roll it over. Into the net and that's gonna end up a point. Dufer not able to control yet again. 11-6 is the Condon Wheeler advantage and a timeout is called by Kelly Darden, the head coach for the Dufer Rangers. Condon Wheeler Arling Arlington, a co-op here. The traditional co-op is the Condon and Wheeler schools getting together, and then Arlington added in here for volleyball. Seventh right now in the OSAA's RPI. That's a seating criteria that is used at every classification eventually to put together a bracket. Due for number one, Powder Valley, that team that has played in the last two state championships but has lost both of them, is number two. You look at the Ion Cardinals, the defending state champions, down at number 24. They are going into the playoffs, though, with the three seed out of the big sky, defeating South Wasco County earlier. The goal this year, and for the first time, is to get to Ridgeview High School. That is the brand new school in Redmond. That's going to end up an ace. 12 to 6, Condon Wheeler's advantage. The service run continuing for Dina Harris. And another tough one. They'll try Darden. The sophomore cuts it across the court to get the kill. 12-7. Due for trailing by five here in set number two. Over past McDonald sets it down towards the Condon Wheeler bench. McDonald's kill on the overpass makes it 12 to 8. Darden continues a service run. They had a big service run for her in the first set when Dufer was able to make a comeback. Johnson out of the back row, and it's going to be a ball handling violation. 13 to 8, now the advantage for the Knights. Landis comes back in for Emma Logan, and serving is Lida. And an ace! The senior libero was able to put a little English on that one. Montana Ferris, the sophomore, apparently didn't read the spin, and so now Dufer's down 14 to 8. Overpass. And a lift called against Dufer after it was Logan who put the overpass back. Lida's little run here has extended the Condon Wheeler lead out to 18, excuse me, 15 to 8. McDonald. Kept up. No, hit the antenna. It's going to be wide either way. Dufer's going to end up with the point here to make it 15 to 9. Kyla Johnson, a junior, back to serve for the Rangers. A little floater gets an ace. Like a knuckleball there. Didn't have any spin on it and just at the end dove down in front of Harley Woods. Five-point lead for the Knights over the Rangers. Rangers serving. 
Bump out wide. Lefty shot by Logan. Kept up at a diving save by Ferris. Another chance into the middle. Logan times the jump. Pounds it into McDonald's block. Nice diving try, but it's going to be Ferris who finds the floor down in front of Harris. 15-11. Little run here by Kyla Johnson at the service line for the Rangers. Logan, another lefty attack. Kept her over by the block, and it's going to come down on the set over by Johnson. Was really sending a free ball back to the Knights because Dufer was out of system. And it ends up coming down as a point for Dufer and cuts the Condon Wheeler lead down to three at 15 to 12. Dumped on two by a John Harrison, but a little bit too high. Dufer stays alive, Darden sends it over. Logan wants it in the middle and it's a diving attempt at a save there by the libero into the match for the first time here in this stretch for the Dufer Rangers, but Logan is able to tool the block for the kill. The uh, senior Bethany uh, Stelzer is the libero in the red jersey on the Dufer side of the net. Attacking right to left. 16 to 12, the Knights advantage. And now make it 17 to 12. Logan really just flipping one over. And the Knights lead is back out to five. Race to 25. And for Condon Wheeler Arlington trying to even this thing up at a set apiece. To Neil McDonald into the top of the net. 18 to 12, Condon Wheeler. Kelly Darden got up, thought about a timeout, and I think decided better of it. She started to walk towards the down official, but didn't end up calling that timeout. Logan on two. Sent back by McDonald. A block for Tennille McDonald, one-on-one. -on -one. Logan, though, didn't really have the cleanest of swings. She was fading away on that one. Kyla Johnson comes out. Kitty Ellier comes in. Ferris to serve, due for down, 18 to 13 here in set two. Logan digs one over and it ends up in a legal handle by Dufer. 19 to 13. Dina Harris to serve again. Condon Wheeler's gone on a run already in this set with her at the service line. Logan sends one back, it's another chance here. And a scramble, Condon Wheeler's alive. Logan lefty swing. Overpass tipped over by Macias. Macias got her hands on it, as did McDonald. Into the back, Harris keeps it up. Landis free ball, due for a chance to get into system. They'll try McDonald in the middle, just a set over, and it's gonna find the floor off of the hands of Logan. She read that it was going to be the uh, dump, but she was already up into the air, so kind of committed to trying to block there and ended up off balance when she made contact with the ball. 20 to 14. Condon Wheeler off of the kill there by Logan. And there is the timeout for Darden and the due for Rangers. Their second of this set. Trying to change momentum here. It's on Condon Wheeler's side of the net in set two. After Dufer took set one, 25 to 20. This year, the 1A is gonna be a 24 team bracket for the OSAA. The Big Sky, like most of the uh, conferences, actually check that all of the conferences get three teams in. The rankings are going to freeze at midnight on Monday as far as the RPI goes. Number three teams from each league will travel to an adjacent league's number two based on a regional pairing rotation. So for instance, we know Ione is the number three team out of the Big Sky. They will take on, on the road, the number two team out of the Old Oregon League. Winners of those matches will advance to the round of 16 where champions await. That is what this match is about. 
The loser will play a home match next week against the number three team out of the Valley 10. The winner goes immediately into the round of 16, one step away from the tournament at Ridgeview High School. 20 to 15 now after Dufer gets a point out of the timeout. Alexa Macias, the setter, serving now. She also has been at the service line when Dufer has gone on a big run. It was in the first set. Darden's attack dug by Logan in the back. Back row, Landis finds the floor just inside the back line, 21-15. Condon Wheeler probably has the fan advantage here and poised to explode if their team can pull down to this second set and even the matchup at a set apiece. Just the top of the net, nice effort there by McDonald. Came oh so close to getting over. Instead, it's the Knights 22-15. Dina Harris serving. Check that. Harley Wood serving. And Wood serves a tough one. And Macias can't direct it over. It's going to end up 23-15 for the Knights. The sophomore Woods back to swing. McDonald plays it just on the back line. Darden free ball over. Right into the middle, big swing sent back by the block off of the Jamison attack. And now an illegal contact on Condon Wheeler. Still comfortable situation for the Knights. 23 to 16 here in set two. Katherine Johnson back to serve. Kyla Johnson in, Kitty L, you're out for the Rangers. The serve is long. Ellie Logan sidestepped with it all the way to the back line and then her whole bench told her out and she let it go at the last second. Set point, Emma Logan comes in to serve it. The freshman for the Knights. 24-16 their advantage. Good hard serve. They'll pipe to Darden who just floats one over. Into the middle, set over by Jamison. Darden gets a better swing that time. Logan's dig sends it back over. Darden swings again. Now tip back to Dufer. Pipe sent McDonald. McDonald tries back row. Logan with the dig. Out wide. Harris swing. Off the hands of uh, McDonald. There's the Condon Wheeler crowd exploding at the 25 16 win. We're going at least four here in the Big Sky Championship. Condon Wheeler Arlington. I'm primarily calling it Condon Wheeler because that's just what you get used to. In fact, in years past when you talk to coaches, fans from Condon Wheeler, they make it very clear, look, we are Condon Wheeler. We're very proud of that uh, agreement. and. Uh, then Arlington is uh, in this co-op here with this team as well. So the opportunity to get right into the round of 16, and that is where the RPI is going to come into play. So do for right now the number one team in the RPI. They go into that round of 16, that's where they'll use it. The winner, this goes right into the 16. The loser is going to end up at home in a matchup against the number three seed out of the Valley 10. So 1-1 one, one right now. It now becomes a best two out of three, essentially. This is the second match for both teams. Give it an idea, just looking at the Valley 10, you're looking at teams like Portland Lutheran, who is number four in the RPI, right at the top of those standings. City Christian, the Lions, uh, number six in the RPI. After that, there's a big tumble. Portland Waldorf is 11 and six. Southwest Christian, 10 and nine. North, nine and 10, excuse me. North Clackamas Christian, nine and 11. The team that comes out as the number three out of the Valley, 10, is going to be a heavy underdog with, with 
against whichever team ends up falling in this Big Sky matchup. And so there is a very good chance that you look at both teams moving into the round of 16. The question's going to be for Ione, who do they end up with? Imbler is a likely opponent, and can Ione beat Imbler and get into the round of 16? For the Cardinals, it's trying at every step of the way to defend your title the best you can as the team that went undefeated last year. Ione did play Imbler once this season, and it was Imbler who came out on top at the Sherman Tournament. We get ready for set number three here at Hermiston High School. Want to welcome you if you're just joining us on the Hermiston School District's live video streaming. Video stream, most Hermiston High athletic events that are played inside this gymnasium known as the Dog House. Also video stream all the activities of the Big Sky basketball and obviously volleyball events. I'm Eric Olson with you on the coverage here today. And it's going to be Brittany Lida to serve to start off set number three. A set apiece. And a one-nothing lead for Condon Wheeler in set number three. Wide is serving. Brittany Landis in the back right now along with Harley Woods. Up front the setter Bailey Harrison. Ellie Logan who sends one back and ends up with a block that leads to a ball handling violation to give the Knights a 2-0 lead. With Logan and Harrison is Dina Harris in the front row right now for the Knights attacking right to left. On defense here kept up by Harris. And Logan will send the free ball over after a big swing by McDonald. Taylor Darden floats one just wide of the line. The sophomore for Dufer trying to cut it right onto the edge and bit off just a little bit more than that attack could chew. So it's 3-0 for Condon Wheeler. Back line on the serve and an ace. 4-0 the Knights have fully grasp control of the momentum in this match. Light on the serve right now. Right now, Kyla Johnson, Tennille McDonald, Montana Ferris, Taylor Darden, Alexa Macias out on the floor along with Katherine Johnson for Dufer. McDonald on the top of the net, did not hit the block. It's gonna be another attack error and a timeout quickly for Kelly Darden. Doofers Rangers down 5-0 here in the third set. They came out, actually trailed until uh, about the midway point of set number one. And then it was on Taylor Darden's serve that Doofer was able to put together a string that got them the lead back. The teams exchanged points and eventually then on the setter Alexa Macias' left-handed serve, Doofer would take advantage they would keep and go on to a 25-20 set one victory. Condon Wheeler, where they grasped control of this match, was midway through set number two, went on to win that set 25 to 16, and they've carried that momentum here into the third set. Up five nothing, and forcing Kelly Darden, the head coach of Dufer, to call an early third set timeout. Each team gets two timeouts per set. Free ball over. In system for Condon Wheeler, Logan's big swing. Past the dive of Darden, and another kill for the Knights, 6-0. Lida serves deep, and it hit the Dufer player, trying to get away from the ball. Katherine Johnson couldn't avoid it and took it off the shin. She's going to come out. The free defensive substitute, the libero, Bethany Stelzer, will come in in that red jersey. Service there by Lida, and that's going to end the run. Seven consecutive points to start the set. And a 7-1 lead after that service there. Rangers going to try to start clawing their way back in. Kyla Johnson on the serve. Logan from the left pin just 
clipped the block. Now McDonald sends it back over off the hands of Logan. Logan again in the middle. One-on-one -on -one with McDonald, kept up by the libero. Stelzer. Logan can't turn the block in. McDonald gets the kill, winning that back and forth battle between those two at the net right in the middle of the court. Seven to two. For the Rangers, and the thing you gotta do is convince your team there's no swing you can make on the serve or on an attack that can get you all seven points back at one time. You gotta chip away. And they've chipped a couple in a row now. Seven to three, their deficit. On the serve of Johnson, coming off of her ace. This time, it's gonna be a swing. Logan, left side. That time, Stelzer can't turn it back in. Logan gets the kill. Eight to three, set number three in favor of Condon Wheeler. The junior setter, Bailey Harrison, is back to serve. Floats to the 10-foot line. A little tough for Macias, but still got to McDonald. Logan tips it over the top of her head, almost like a no-look pass. Out wide, Harris, the attack, catches the block. Dufer will pipe to Darden. Darden off the block of Logan for the kill. Right now, when they need a swing, they're looking for Taylor Darden. And at least for one more play, she is in the back row, so she has to attack behind that line at three meters or 10 feet. Eight to four, Condon Wheeler's advantage here in set three. Right in the middle, Logan. It's kept up by Darden, and now a free ball coming back over to Condon Wheeler. How good is the pass? Really good. Right in the middle again. Logan can't get the tip, though. Mischimed her jump. It was almost too good. The pass was perfect to Harrison. And they were trying to go quick to Ellie Logan in the middle. It just didn't quite get high enough to her. Eight to five, Dufers cut the lead down to three. And now it's down to two after the attack is wide by Harley Woods. Maria Clemens, Terry Humphrey, and Kayla Grubach sitting next to each other right now. Quietly trying to figure out what they need to diagnose here to get that advantage they had at the very start of this set back. You had to figure Dufer wasn't going anywhere. You don't win 20 matches on accident. There's a kill that extends the Knights lead back out to three at nine to six. Still early here in this third period of play. One set apiece. Second match of the day for each team. Dufer's first match was slightly more difficult than Condon Wheeler Arlington's was. Condon Wheeler Arlington took care of South Wasco County. Blocked there, Macias at the net turns it back. Rangers have got it down to 9-7. Their deficit is two, as Taneel McDonald is back to serve. Misfire there by Logan. It's gonna have to be a free ball over. Darden out wide, into the front row, gets the kill, it didn't matter. Condon Wheeler was into the net on the block. It was either going to be the swing off the back line or the blocker into the net anyways. Now due for down by just one. Down 7-0 to start this set at a rotation violation before the serve for Condon Wheeler ties it at nine. It is a 9-2 run by the due for Rangers. Harris's swing. McDonald keeps it up. Free ball if they can get it over, and they do. They'll try the middle. Logan off the top of the block, and it floats in front of Elliott for the kill. Knights 10 to 9. Now Ali Logan is in the back, so it's going to be a question of whether or not Maddie Jamison can match Logan's production at the net here. Jamison's first swing since she came back in. Top of the block and then down to the 10-foot line. 11-9 Condon Wheeler. You know that once Logan goes into the back in these next three positions, she's going to get set in the back row. But 
At the same time, they're going to need Jamison to produce as well. Condon Wheeler never could quite steer that one as they scrambled over. Dufer down by one at 11-10. They tied this one at, at nine. Mishandled ball in the back row by the sophomore Ferris. And the Knights' advantage is 12 to 10. Right now it's a sophomore for Condon Wheeler, Harley Woods back to serve. McDonald. Free ball never made it over. Four contact for the Knights. And their deficit is back down to one at 12-11. Johnson in, now you're out for Dufer. It wouldn't be hard to imagine that these two teams will do this again in about 365 days. Dufer, just two seniors. Hell, you're one of them who just came out. That's going to go to Dufer to tie at 12. Connor Wheeler does have more seniors here, but Brittany Turlin and Courtney McGinn is not used much. They will have to replace the libero Lida and then Brittany Landis. But that attacking pair of uh, the junior Ellie Logan and the sophomore Matney Jamison has got another year together, and obviously this year is not over yet. Plus, you watch for the development of another Logan. Emma Logan, the freshman in here after Condon Wheeler jumps back out in front. 13 to 12 and Logan gets an ace. Logan in, another one of those seniors. Courtney McKinnis is in right now. She's wearing that zebra looking headband on the far side of the court. Attacking right to left and then an overpass put down. Little run here, quick one too. Three point advantage for the Knights. 15 to 12. Condon Wheeler up. McDonald's pass not perfect, but they get it to Ferris. Kept up by Logan, free ball coming. Much better pass, right into the middle for Darden and it's kept up by the senior McKinnis. Tipped over by the sophomore, McDonald keeps it alive. Out wide left side. Tipped by Ferris into the net was the block on the Ferris attack attempt. That's going to be a point for Dufer. 15 to 13, Condon Wheeler's advantage. Taylor Darden is back into the back row. Kind of like Ellie Logan, she'll get opportunities to swing from behind that 10 foot line, but they will not be nearly as regular. Attack is long. Dufer is down by just one at 15 to 14. Ace, tied at 15. Darden keeps the run going. They, she was on the serve in the run in the first set where Dufer was able to take the lead and end up winning that set. Joust at the net, sent back. Dufer to control, Darden on the pipe set. Rolls it in the back row, kept up by a Logan. And the setting air off of uh, the hitter Dina Harris's hands gives Dufer their lead. First one of the set after they fell behind 7-0 to start this set, now 16-15. Not how you start necessarily, how you finish. Big block there by Jamison on the McDonald attempt. Darden this time. Kept up by McKinnis. This setback, though, by Ferris, the sophomore for Dufer. 17 to 15. Now the timeout coming for Condon Wheeler's Knights. <laughs> Dufer trying to win another Big Sky title. They've got the football title in hand as uh, they were able to win 
really the big matchup, but I understand it's called Special District 3, but it's South Wasco County, Sherman County, Ione, Echo, Dufer, Condon, Wheeler, Arlington. It's the big sky. And Dufer at 6-0, and oh, they won the big one over Sherman County, and that's what gave them the uh, football title in the eight-man league. Sherman's also going to be in. For Condon Wheeler, they're going to be on the outside looking in in football. Four and four their record. They went two and four in the league. Their other two losses, they lost to Dufer in Sherman County, obviously, but Condon Wheeler also lost to Echo and Ione. Echo and Ione play in Echo this coming Friday night for the third playoff spot out of the big sky. Mishandle there by Condon Wheeler. And so the Rangers' advantage is now 18 to 15. Can Dufer make it the double? It's a set of piece right now, but Dufer has grasped back a hold of old momentum here in set number three after falling behind 7-0 to start this set. Good keep up there by Stelzer, but then a ball handling violation against the Rangers. And for Condon Wheeler, finally they were able to get out of that rotation they had got stuck in. Lida back to serve. Brittany Landis comes back in. She'll play back row for Condon Wheeler. 18 to 16, Dufer's advantage. Make it 18 to 17 after the block at the net. Logan, Harrison, Roof. The senior Lida pounds one to the back row, picks out her opposite libero, and Stelzer can't keep it up. And Stelzer, the senior, will come out. Katherine Johnson will come back in. So much of serve receive is confidence. And Stelzer was put in for Johnson in back row serve receive opportunities when Johnson was having trouble getting a couple of directed in. Logan in the middle, back line, got the corner and just barely Condon Wheeler's got the lead by one, 19 to 18. Ace at an opportune time for the Knights. A little diving serve there by Elida. She has been able to put together the best strings of serves for Condon Wheeler in this match. 20 to 18 is their advantage. To Neil McDonald, left pin. Off the top of the net, Condon Wheeler can control. They'll try Logan in the middle. It was a ball handling violation. Just to the left of the up official, Bailey Harrison had that ball come awkwardly off of her set. And so Dufer down by 120 to 19. Back to serve Johnson. Ace for Kyla Johnson to tie it at 20. And if serve receive is all about confidence, both sides of the net right now probably seeing their shakiest serve receive moments of this match. There's another ace. Consecutive aces. That one fell in between a Bermuda triangle of Landis and Lida looking at each other as the ball looked at the back line. 21 to 20 Dufer. The junior Johnson to tee up another serve. And to tee up another ace, no, they kept it alive. But it was darn close, and then Darden mishandles. That's just the way the ball bounces sometimes. It looked like Condon Wheeler was going to give up a third consecutive ace to Kyla Johnson, and Darden was not able to handle a pretty easy free ball, 21 all. Pipe set, Darden floats it over behind the 10-foot line. They'll set wide, Harris will hit to the back row. McDonald in the middle, off the hands of Logan and out. It's gonna be a kill for Tennille McDonald to give due for the 22-21 lead. The senior, Katie Ellier, comes in. The service is for the sophomore, Montana Ferris. Back line for the Nace. And a timeout for the Condon Wheeler Knights. Twenty-three twenty-one here 
in favor of Dufer. This one started out all Condon Wheeler. 7-0. Then it was all Dufer. A 9-2 run to tie it at 9 apiece. Little Dufer run to take it advantage. Condon Wheeler, it's a, been a game of runs here. And it seems like it's going to be whoever can make the last run. The question is, can Condon Wheeler get some organization in their serve receive? Ferris's serve is picked out in the back by Logan. Logan's attack is dug in return by the senior, Hellier. Due for a chance to control. McDonald in the middle, sets it over. Kept up by Logan, and then a ball handling violation on Katherine Johnson. She knew she had no coverage from defensive help on the far side there. And so when that ball came off of her hands back in front of her, she was stuck. Condon Wheeler down by just one at 23 to 22. McDonald, big swing, gets the block and dives down in front of the effort by Dina Harris. Set point for Dufer. After falling behind 7-0 and then being behind 15 to 12 in this set. They're a point away from taking a two sets to one lead. Logan has something to say about it and there's a tip. Dufer thought they got the set. Dufer starting to line themselves up like they're going to switch sides. The tip was called by the line judge on the back side of the play. That's where the call is supposed to be made. So now 24-23. Can Condon Wheeler extend the set? It is a win by two situation. Darden sets it back and Condon Wheeler controls. Into the middle. Jamison's dug. Logan with a dig. Jamison again in the middle, high off the hands of the block. Out wide to Darden to win the set. Yes, she does. Diving effort there by Logan. It's amazing that she's able to get back to that, but it's going to be 25 23. Dufer now a set away from the Big Sky Tournament Championship. There's a good chance a lot of the participants in this one will be back here at Hermiston High School come late February, the Big Sky Basketball Tournament. That'll also be hosted by the Hermiston Sports Boosters here in Hermiston High School's Doghouse. A lot of these teams though trying to avoid thinking about basketball quite yet. Neither team is on the verge of having their season come to an end. The question is, who gets an off match? Who gets the bye and an automatic bid into the round of 16, a win away from Redmond? And who's got to get two wins to get to Redmond? Set number four, this will be the final one played out to 25. If they get to a fifth set in this best of five, that's played to 15. Things get just a little bit tighter there. We'll see how Condon Wheeler responds because they were at one point up 7-0 in that set. They were at another point up 15-12. And Dufer just kept coming back. And as we said, right there where it was about 7-0, Dufer, the message has got to be, look, there's no swing we can take that gets us all seven points back at once. Not trying to do that. They were able to put themselves into a position where they end up winning the set 25-23. Kind of just it's a matter of patience. And obviously you've got two experienced teams doing battle here today. Kelly Darden 
will send out this six to start set number four, trying to win the Big Sky Tournament. Sophomore Montana Ferris, junior Tennille McDonald, and the setter, junior Alexa Macias in the front row. Sophomore Taylor Darden, junior Katherine Johnson, and junior Kyla Johnson in the back row. For the Condon Wheeler Knights, Maria Clemens in set four will send out again the setter, junior Bailey Harrison. Out in front right now with the uh, junior Ellie Logan. Sophomore Dina Harris, senior Brittany Landis. The libero right now on the floor is the senior Brittany Lida and that F-colored light blue jersey. And then Light is in for Matty Jamison, who's on the end of the bench. She'll come in when that position is in a front row attack. Logan, first swing here of set four. Set over and barely cleared, but Ferris got it over. Logan again, down the line, but wide. They want a touch, and they got the touch. And Kelly Darden, palms to the sky, wants to know how they could have made that call, though, on the touch because it was called from the far side of the net on an angled shot down the near sideline. Very tough one. If you saw it, you saw it. And it's going to be one o Condon Wheeler. Darden in the back row, floats one in deep for Condon Wheeler. Left side, Harris's attack kept up. Macias will come over and get it out wide to Ferris. Diving save by Lida, top of the net, and it'll fall. Lottie got the ball up, but it floated too far for Condon Wheeler, and so it's one apiece. Katie Hellier will come in. Kyla Johnson will come out. The senior comes in to play defensive in the three back row positions for Dufer's Rangers. Logan right in the middle. Wanted it after she received the serve and put it down. She put down the changeup sign and hit it just behind the back row, excuse me, behind the 10 foot line. Two to one. Knights up. Knights have the fan advantage here in this gym. And these fans looking for a chance to help their team pull momentum back their way. Logan in the middle, gets it off of the hands of Darden for the kill. Three-one. Dina Harris on the service. Overpass. Condon Wheeler a chance. Logan in the middle. The set was not perfect. And Dufer's able to keep it up. But now another essentially free ball for Condon. Wheeler tipped over. Does it stay? And it's poked back over by McDonald. Logan will try again and this time get the kill as Macias gets called for the lift. Four to one, Condon Wheeler. Jumped out early in set three. And Dufer was able to dig back. It's a three point lead here to start set four. Landis' swing, got a touch for the kill. The senior, Brittany Landis, gets that right handed swing. Clipped a Dufer Ranger, and now it's five to one Knights. Good serve. Lida, good pass into the middle for Logan on the quick, and it's going to be another change up attack from Ellie Logan. And the junior gets another kill. Got to be approaching 20 here in this match. Six to one, and we're only in set four. But it is a usage rate thing. They use a lot of Logan here. McDonald. Big swing, somehow kept up by Condon Wheeler, but the set is short from Nina Harris. Harris made a tremendous dive to keep that one alive, but then couldn't get it back over. Marie Clemens says, you know, you can bump that one clear. Six to two, Condon Wheeler up. McDonald back to serve. Drives one to the back line, diving keep by Harris to make this play go on. Logan kind of pirouettes as she hits that one over. McDonald in the back row, just not sure-handed on that swing. 7-2, Condon Wheeler's advantage. 
Ellie Logan now serving. Darden from the left side. Landis gets the dig, now she'll get the swing. Top of the block, and it is long. Thought that one took the touch, but it's gonna be long and Rangers get the point. Seven to three, their deficit is four. As Taylor Darden, the sophomore, check that. It is Alexa Macias back to serve. The lefty gets an ace. Harley Woods is gonna come out. Courtney McKinnis is gonna come in, the senior in for the purpose of serve receive as Macias, who's had that nice cut serve, just like that, a little knuckleball floater from the right side over to the defensive left, back line on the Landis attack. Eight to four, Condon Wheeler. And now McKinnis is going to be in to serve. Drives one and gets an ace. Katherine Johnson decided just a little bit too late from her front row position right on the 10 foot line that she should take the uh, attempt at that one. And it foul tipped off of her arms and at that point Dufer could not steer it in. Nine to four and another tough serve. McDonald's gonna give a free ball coming over. Can Condon Wheeler use it? Landis out wide, cuts it back across, diving save by Darden goes wide. Condon Wheeler the point, 10 to four, the Rangers want a timeout. It is the Big Sky 2012 Volleyball Tournament. Both teams going to the state championship tournament which will start next week. Ion joins them. They beat South Wasco County for third place. This whole postseason in Big Sky Volleyball started earlier this week on Thursday. The East playoff, Sherman County and Ion. Ion won that. The West playoff, South Wasco and Echo. The directional determination is based on which conference, which division the lower seeded team was in. So Ione and South Wasco, the two seeds, each win the crossover matches. South Wasco lost a straight set match to Condon Wheeler earlier this afternoon. And it was Dufer beating the defending champions Ione three sets to one. Service air out of that timeout. And the point to the Rangers cuts their deficit down to five at 10 to five. <laughs> Poked over but wide off of the hand of Ferris the sophomore. Couldn't steer it in play and so the Knights will get an 11 to five lead. And a sub coming as Landis the senior will come out and the freshman Emma Logan will come in. Six point advantage for the Knights serving down two sets to one. Darden floats one over. They're gonna pick out right into the middle. Jamison, she mistimed her jump there. Bailey Harrison really did put one in a good position but I think Maddie Jamison would know she's just a little bit late on that approach. 11 to six here in set four. Condon Wheeler still up. Off the block, Jamison keeps it up and now there's contact and so it's gonna be a hit into the net by McKinnis. McKinnis isn't necessarily in the wrong there but they ended up with three Knights in the same spot. And so now Dufer's down by four at 11 to seven. The Rangers trying to get the Big Sky title, Condon Wheeler trying to extend this to a fifth set. Condon Wheeler's advantage after that point is now 12 to seven. And Lida the libero comes back in. Little knuckle ball ends up a free ball for Condon Wheeler. They can't use it, McDonald sends back the ball from Harrison for the block kill, 12 to eight. Yeah. 
sent over again. McDonald is not able to control on the do for side. 13 to eight. Condon Wheeler's advantage. And now their setter, Bailey Harrison is back to serve. McDonald picks it out, gets the swing back and finds the back line. Thirteen to nine. Hellier back in, Kyla Johnson out. Katie Hellier lined up on the far side of the court as Dufer attacks right to left here in set number four. The service is the sophomore Ferris. Logan in the middle, tipped off of the block and the block was in the net anyways. Fourteen to nine. This is where Condon Wheeler's got to make hay right now with Logan in that front row before she ends up back in the back row serving. Nobody there, it's going to be a point for Dufer to cut the lead back down to four at 14 to 10. Tennille McDonald back to serve for the Rangers. McDonald's gonna have to send the free ball over high into the rafters and it's wide. Might have took a touch on the speakers up directly above the net as well here at Hermiston High School's gymnasium. The Knights lead is 15 to 10. Now here is Ellie Logan serving and serves one right into the middle of the net. The air gives the ball right back to the Rangers and now Alexa Macias to serve. Dufer down 15 to 11. Macias has had a couple of good runs. That little knuckleball serve. Darden floats one and finds the floor with a kill. Both Darden and Logan here in this set more so than any of the first three sets have been going with the change-ups. 15 to 12. Their change-ups are still as hard as many people's attacks. The set to the back. Landis finds the back line. And the lead is four again at 16 to 12. Courtney McKinnis is going to be serving. McDonald free ball over. In system for Condon Wheeler. Out wide, Landis into the net on her follow through. Condon Wheeler was in prime position and was not able to get the point there. Their lead still is a comfortable four, 17 to 13. The set comes over the net. The CS will come out wide. Off of the hands, Ferris gets the kill. Landis was there but couldn't steer it in play. 17-14. Now a three point lead for the Knights as Dufer serves. Wide, four point again. Check that, they've adjusted the scoreboard. Now it is 17 to 14. Emma Logan in, the freshman to serve here. And another service error by a Logan here for Condon Wheeler. In this fourth set, it makes it 17 to 15. Still the Knights ahead. Darden serves it right back. You've had a couple of the prime players in this match with service errors here over the last few points. 18 to 15 for the Knights. It's like a free throw. You gotta make sure that you Serve it the exact same way. The toss has got to be the same. The swing's got to be the same. Even when you're trying to do something different, a float or a hard line drive, you've got to have some things that are similar every time. 19 to 15 after that ace. Lida again. Picks out Darden. McDonald on the left side. And McDonald's going to get the kill as it caroms off of Landis. There's some frustration there for the senior Brittany Landis right now. 
Maria Clemens from the sidelines trying to talk her through it. Dufer's disadvantages still three at 19 to 16. Flipped over but wide by the setter Harris and the pass was not great to her. And so now it is 19 to 17, Dufer down by just two as they try to claw their way back into set number four. They're up two sets to one. Overpass, McDonald, huge swing for the kill. Timeout, Condon Wheeler. Dufer has all of the momentum. 19 to 18, Condon Wheeler up by a point here in this fourth set. From around the rest of 1A Volleyball playoff action, Portland Waldorf took care of North Clackamas Christian, three sets to none. And the schedule says City Christian will take on Portland Lutheran at Portland Lutheran here in a few minutes. The number three out of that league is going to end up playing the team that loses here next week. And the team that falls in this match will be at home. The winner of this match gets to wait in the round of 16. Out of the Mountain West League playoffs, McKenzie defeats Lowell 3-2. No score posted for Triangle Lake Mapleton. Those being played in Junction City. They're in jewel for the Casco League uh, playoffs. Veritas beat Willamette Valley Christian 3-1, then lost to County Christian 3-2. St. Ball Perrydale is going on right now. There's an ace, and it's tied at 19. This run in part off of the Kyla Johnson serve. She's back to serve again at 19 all. And the serve is just wide. Twenty to nineteen. The Knights with the one-point advantage here in set four. Trying to extend this into a fifth set. Right into the middle for McDonald. She'll go tip. It's kept up. And right into the middle for Logan. Darden sends a free ball back. Logan again. No. Right there with McKinnis. I'm not sure which of them got the touch over. McKinnis in there on block right now. Logan in the middle finds the back line. Just past the arms of Darden. 21 to 19. Two point advantage for Condon Wheeler. And Bailey Harrison is back to serve. Darden off the top of the net. Condon Wheeler keeps it up. Logan flips it over. And they're going to get a free ball back as Dufer's not able to control. Logan back sets out wide, punched over, but wide of the pin on the attack attempt by Dina Harris. Dufer down by one. 21 to 20. Montana Ferris back to serve. Driven ball. McKittis keeps it up. Logan goes high, goes long, tied at 21. Logan in the middle, right in front of the server, Ferris, for the kill. Dina Harris is a sophomore serving with her team up 22-21. Darden, and it's going to be a cut across by Johnson. Free ball over from Logan. Can do for use it this time. Pipe set to Darden. Righty spinner into the back row. Out left for Landis and off the block of McDonald for the kill. Brittany Landis, the senior, gets the kill. 23-21 and it fires as a doofer timeout. What else has been going on around the state? They're playing in Legrand. 
in the old Oregon League playoffs, Powder Valley blanks Pine Eagle and really controlled it as well. The team that's been runner-up in 1A volleyball two years in a row, 25-8, 25-12, Nobody else has posted yet. Imbler and Cove and Joseph. Wallawa took on Pine Eagle earlier. Nobody's posted from the High Desert League. The Mountain View is lacking any scores. Camas Valley falls to Young Call in the Skyline playoffs, three sets to none. These two teams fighting to make it into the 1A bracket of 24. Twenty-three, twenty-one. Condon Wheeler on the serve of Dina Harris. Darden again, rolls one to the back row. It's gonna take a deflection. Free ball coming from McKinnis. McKinnis into the speakers up above the net. And it's gonna be a point for Dufer. 23-22, they're down by one. Tennille McDonald back to serve. Taylor Darden in the front row. If Macias can get into system, I guarantee Darden. Here goes, Darden, out left pin, takes a swing, sent back by the block. Darden jumps over on teammate, it's gonna be illegal contact on McDonald. Set point for Condon Wheeler. Ellie Logan the serve, some of the fans from the Knights up on their feet, 24-22. Logan picks out McDonald, set out to Darden, Darden gets the kill. 24-23, the Knights still on set point. The setter, Alexa Macias, who's had so much success on her serve, will serve after a Knights timeout. Maria Clemens, whose team here in the last half of the third set and here in the fourth set, has not had their A game in serve receive. It's not been complete disaster, but there was a stretch there at the end of the third set where Dufer was able to make their comeback on a series of aces. So here with Macias, who likes to line up on the right side of her court and then cut it cross court with her left-handed swing, kind of hits it on the outside. For you tennis fans in the audience, if anybody's in the audience, it's like a McTwist. She hits a screwball off the outside of her left hand that'll cut across the court and fall behind the 10-foot line. This time she goes into the middle for Logan. Out wide, the attack for Jamison is a kill off of the hands of McDonald. It's set five on the way to decide the Big Sky title in 2012 at Hermiston High School. Dufer took the first, 25-20. Condon Wheeler stormed back in the second set to win 25-16. The Knights opened the third set on a 7-0 run, but Dufer was able to get back into it and won the third set, 25-23. Condon Wheeler won the fourth just now, 25-23. And we'll play to 15 points. You do have to win by two. Teams are gonna end up switching sides here after the coin toss between the captains prior to the start of this fifth period of play. Ione is in, Ione is going on the road. The defending state champions will go to the number two team out of the old Oregon League sometime early next week. The team that does not win here is going to be at home against the number three seed out of the Valley 10, and they will be a favorite. Either Condon Wheeler or Dufer will be a favorite against the team they'll play out of the Valley 10, unless there was an upset in their tournament if everything stays as expected, the number three seed is going to be a sub-500 team. 
getting into the round of 24. The winners of the midweek matches next week will put themselves into a position to get into the round of 16. The winner of this one doesn't necessarily know who they're going to play. They can speculate based on where they sit in the RPI and where others sit in the RPI. They can look at their everybody's rankings and figure out if A beats B and uh, then C beats D and E beats F, etc, etc, etc. Let's say all the favorites win based on what you know about the teams or maybe just straight off of the ratings system used by the OSAA for seeding purposes, then you can guess. So let's say, for instance, Dufer, if they are successful here in this fifth set, they're going to be the number one seed going into the playoffs, most likely. They have a pretty significant lead over Powder Valley, and they're playing a tougher conference foe in Condon Wheeler here today whereas Powder Valley is going to be hurt a little bit by the opponents they have in the old Oregon League playoffs. So let's say Dufer holds the number one spot. Then they can look at all the midweek matchups and figure out, okay, if everybody wins the way they should, who's going to be the lowest seed remaining? That's who will play in the round of 16. If it's Condon Wheeler, they currently sit at 7th. A win here would buoy them and move them up a little bit, most likely. They are just less than a point behind City Christian who plays out of the Valley 10 League. Here we go. Set five. Big Sky on the line. Due for attacking left to right. Sent back by Logan and it's going to be a block for her. And a point for Condon Wheeler. Brittany Lida Libero serving. Brittany Landis in front of her. Near side, Courtney McKinnis, the senior, has come in and playing significant minutes late in this match. Diving dig by Landis. Right in the middle for Ellie Logan. Goes with a left-handed swing. Joust at the net. Logan misaligned it, and Tennille McDonald gets the point to tie it at one apiece. So Lida Landis out on the floor with McKinnis right now. Ellie Logan, Harley Woods, Bailey Harrison. Serving for Dufer is Kyla Johnson. And almost ending up with a ace out of that was Johnson. But Dufer's got a chance to set it over short. Logan diving save. Left side for Harris. And it's going to be a kill. 2-1 Condon Wheeler. <laughs> Taylor Darden, Katherine Johnson, and... Kyla Johnson to the back row right now. Montana Ferris up front with Tennille McDonald and the setter Alexa Macias. Macias sets in the middle for McDonald. Saved there by the setter Harrison. Free ball over from Logan. Dufer can tee it up again. They'll try back set. The little slide. Long way to run for McDonald. Free ball coming over from Condon Wheeler again. Dufer will try a third consecutive in-system try. Left side for Ferris. The sophomore is dug in the back row by Landis. But Condon Wheeler can't control. It's tied at two. Sub coming here for the Rangers, as they do. Katie Hellyer will come in and play back row. Kyla Johnson will come out. Johnson plays in the three positions up at the net. Hellier plays in the three positions behind the 10-foot line as a defensive specialist. Logan tips one off the hands of the setter, Macias, for a kill. Three-two. The Knights on top by one. Dina Harris tees the serve. Darden will set back over towards Ferris and free ball over to Condon Wheeler. Right in the middle for Logan. Kept up. Over. And Logan will try again. It's going to be tipped by McKinnis. She was over the net, they say. They say the ball had carried over the net when McKinnis touched it. Very tough call there at 3-2. Condon Wheeler ties it at 3. Logan in the middle. McDonald got her hands on it but couldn't direct it to a teammate. Logan another kill, 4-3. to three. Now Ellie Logan is in the back row here. 
serving on this one. They'll try Darden left pin. Darden gets the kill. Down in front of the diving effort by Dina Harris, the sophomore. It's tied at four. Race to 15. Macias drives one this time, finds Logan in the back row. Near side, the attack is long by Jamison. Dufer's first advantage here in this fifth set, five to four. Macias a little bit more cut on that one. Jamison tips to the 10 foot line, kept up into the net. Darden keeps it alive, floated over by Johnson. Nice job by Dufer just to keep this one up, but then they're in the net on that attack. Landis got the swing and Dufer was into the net. Five each. McKinnis back to serve. Service there gives Dufer the advantage again, six to five. Kyla Johnson comes back in. Katie Hellier, the senior, comes out. Dufer up by one, six to five, serving Johnson. This is Katherine Johnson. Left side off the top of the defender. Ferris, the kill for Jamison. Six all. Neither team can get more than a one point lead in this set. Darden, a tip, kept up by Logan. Back into the middle, the swing by Jamison off the net. Two for seven. Condon Wheeler, six. Play to 15, win by two. Taylor Darden to serve. Left side, Harris's attack off the top of the block. Darden sets into the middle. Johnson sends it over, but wide. Tied at seven now in set number five. Two for one sets, one and three. Emma Logan will come out. Brittany Landis will come in. Condon Wheeler, one sets, two and four. Free ball from Ferris. They're going to try Jamison in the middle. Darden swing off of Landis. Kept up by McKinnis and a free ball over. McDonald on the uh, slide off of the block of Logan and down for the kill. Eight to seven for Dufer. They got into system and then ran, ran McDonald left to right across the court back behind the setter on that slider X play and end up as a kill. Logan is dug by Darden. The block gets it. It's though going to fall to the floor off of the hands of Harris. Logan and the setter Harrison were in there, but the kill for due for the first two-point lead for either team here in the fifth set. Nine to seven, Rangers up. Overpass, McDonald swings into the top of the net. Now the Knights are down by just one. And Bailey Harrison, the junior setter, is back to serve. Tennille McDonald was in position but could not put that one in the right spot. Really didn't have to move at all, got the platform on it, but could not direct it. 9-9 now. McDonald handles that one, gets it back from Macias, and then is dug in the back row by Landis. Free ball over from Logan, deep into the court. Bump set Darden, rolls it, set back by Logan on the block. First block here of the set, and it's going to force a timeout for Kelly Darden as Condon Wheeler takes a 10-9 lead. Can only go to the well so many times, and finally with Logan up front on that pipe set back to Darden, and when you put her out wide, it takes away some of her options. When she's in the middle of the court, 
on that back row set, she's got more court to look at and more court to work with. When she's out wide on that far sideline like she was there, just behind the 10-foot line, Darden's really only option because of the angle is to come back across the court. So for Ellie Logan, she knows she doesn't have to guard a shot down the line, and if it goes down the line, then fine, she's not gonna get to it, but there's defense there. She can take the middle of the court and try to cut that cross court shot down. That's exactly what happened. And the block gives Condon Wheeler the 10-9 lead and forces the do for timeout. Harrison still serving. McDonald left side, off the block, kept up by Lida, set over by Logan. Darden, dug by Landis, hits the rafters, kept up, Lida will send the free ball over. And then McDonald swings and hits the top of the net. Mark that down as Condon Wheeler's composure when the ball got up into the rafters after a huge dig by Brittany Landis. They were able to get it back over and ends up with a point. Now off the net. Darden sends it over, essentially a free ball over, passed right back. They'll try Logan in the middle. Goes tip out wide. 11-9, Condon Wheeler. Darden goes down the line. That time when she was set back into the back row by Macias, Macias didn't put her quite out as wide. The one that was blocked by Logan, Darden was standing on the line, if not outside of the sideline. That time she was about a step in, so she had the angle to go right down past the pin. Dufer's deficit is one at 11 to 10. Lida floats it into the middle. Logan will get it over. Darden again. We'll try the line again. And now Logan swings at it, and it's kept up by Dufer. Darden, cross court this time in front of Lida for the kill. Ties at 11, and a timeout for Maria Clemens. It doesn't get much tighter than this for the Big Sky District to Tournament. And a trip to the round of the 16 in the OSAA State Tournament. Donna Eddix sits over on the far sideline. One of the last I own representatives watching intently here. Has the state championship from a year ago when I own had a perfect season. Now I own is going to try to make some type of magical Cinderella run as the three seed. They'll be on the road and off to the east middle of the week. It's 11 all. The loser of this one will be at home in the middle of the week against the number three seed out of the Valley 10 League. 11 all. Serving for Dufer, Montana Ferris. Logan in the middle. Off the hands of Ferris for the kill. That one had so much power, even though Ferris got her hands off of it, it caromed all the way to the back wall and halfway up that wall. 12-11, Condon Wheeler. An ace into the back corner. Ferris, the sophomore, let it go. It floated just down into the back corner. Dina Harris, another sophomore with that swing. Now the Knights lead is two. 13-11. This is their first two-point lead in the set. That's how close this set has been. At 7-7, neither team had taken a two-point lead. Then Dufer rattled off two in a row to get in front, 9-7. Condon Wheeler pulled it back. And now they've got the two-point lead at 13-11. And they're two points away from 15. If they can win it by two, they'll get the match. A lot of twos in play there, but it's got to be one point at a time for Maria Clemens' squad, trying to win the Big Sky Tournament. Dina Harris to serve. Knights 13, Rangers 11. Darden again. Roll shot into the back, Harris keeps it alive. Logan sets it long. 
It was just a free ball over, but the Rangers get the point. Now they're down by one, 13 to 12. Tennille McDonald to serve. Two incredibly young teams. You can see this one playing out again in another year. Right into the middle, Logan off the top of the hands of Johnson. Darden up front now, sent back by the block. McKinnis, not a starter, in there late with more composure as a senior, it looks like. In there on the block along with Logan, and it's sent back and gives championship point to Condon Wheeler. And it's an ace to win the championship. The ace off of the Ellie Logan serve gives Condon Wheeler a 15 to 12 fifth set and they win the match three sets to two. They win the Big Sky Championship for 2012. That was the type of volleyball worthy of the state tournament site if not the finals. Back and forth in a battle. Both teams deserving of the opportunity to win the Big Sky Championship, but only one of them could do it here. It's the Condon Wheeler Arlington Knights. For Dufer, they will fall to 20 and five. For Condon Wheeler, it is win 17 on this 2012 season. They will hoist the trophy. They will have the bye. They will go directly into the round of 16. The Knights are one match away from going to Redmond and Ridgeview High School in the final eight for the state tournament. For due for the trip is one match longer. They will be at home. They will be the favorite against the number three seed out of the Valley 10. And that is going to be middle of next week. I own also playing on the road at the number two seed out of the old Oregon League. To be determined, if we were to guess, Imbler is a likely opponent. Imbler has beaten I own, but I own does have the magic of until somebody knocks them out of these playoffs, they are the defending state champions. Again, Dufer picks up set 125-20 over Condon Wheeler. Condon Wheeler set 2, 25 to 16. Dufer 25-23 in set 3. Condon Wheeler 25-23 to extend this into the 5th. And then in the 5th set, 15 to 12. 3 points, the largest lead for either team in the 5th set. And Condon Wheeler, Arlington's Knights have it to win the Big Sky District Tournament here in 2012. I want to thank you for joining us here today for our coverage from high atop Hermiston High School's doghouse. And we'll be back here come uh, late February for the uh, Big Sky Basketball Tournament as well. We expect many of the uh, contributors to this crazy good match will be in that as well. At least the likelihood is a Condon Wheeler do for matchup would not be out of the question. It is the champions of the Big Sky East, Condon Wheeler Arlington. The trophy presentation here at Hermiston High School and we'll leave you with the natural sound of that on your broadcast courtesy of the Hermiston School District's video stream. I'm Eric Olson. Thanks for joining me here today from Hermiston High School saying so long and we'll talk to you again soon.
Presentations of trophies. 